All right, so let's talk V-Ray frame buffer. Now, to find the V-Ray frame buffer in the render settings, go to the V-Ray common, and then scroll down to the bottom, and in the render view, there will be uh, a tab with a, a number of options that relate to the V-Ray frame buffer. So the first thing is let's activate it. Okay, and now this is gonna be pretty much your best friend when working in V-Ray. It's one of the things that really sets it apart from other renderers. Um, really the only other renderer that I can think of that has anything close to it is, is it with RenderMan. But really, the V-Ray frame buffer is one of the places where V-Ray shines. So let's talk about this. What is this? So this is our render buffer viewer. I'll start and we'll go through all these settings uh, one by one and figure out what they are. But let me show you what it looks like when you would first uh, open it up, because I have some extra things enabled here that wouldn't necessarily be there. So first, let's turn that off and turn off the history. So this is your V-Ray frame buffer as you would see it, fresh out of Maya. So the first things we'll look at, starting uh, up the top left, and this is where you're going to scroll through all your passes when you, you fire off your render. So pretty simple. Take a look, You've got just a standard complement of render passes, but you can see uh, if you arrow up and down, you can quickly scroll through your available passes uh, and take a look. And now one of the main reasons why this thing is so amazing and you know really helpful to your workflow is, you know, say I'm looking at this and I say, oh, okay, I've got a little bit of noise over here. Um, what passes that noise in so that I know, well, do I need to add subdivs to my reflection? Do I need to add them? to a specific light, um, and that's how you'll you'll kind of find it is you, know, you pop through and you say, okay, you know, my GI is okay, maybe there's a little bit of noise in there, so maybe I'll throw a couple extra rays to my GI. That way you're not just blindly adding samples all over the place, so you can really zero in and figure out where the trouble is on a per layer basis. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the buffer scroll down, and now moving left to right, Pretty standard RGB, you can isolate and look at your particular color channels, or you can isolate just in on the alpha. This particular image doesn't have a cutout, uh, everything in the scene, it was rendered with the image plane on, so that's going to be solid. Um, but that's where you would go to inspect your alpha um, if you had one. Now this next one I actually find really helpful uh, when I'm in my lighting process. It gives you a monochrome black and white. Uh, option to look at and basically this is really helpful just to check out your silhouette and and find you know your shapes and the contours of the shadows and really just try and see you know if your lighting is holding up in an artistic way so that's a really good one to play with every now and then pretty standard just save the current channel you can set this and save this frame out you can open a frame if you open up your buffer empty and you want to look at something you've already saved. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can kill an image from the buffer by cl clicking this. Duplicate to Maya frame buffer. Now this is pretty standard. We click this guy and then we go to the standard Maya view and now we see it transferred from the V-Ray frame buffer to the standard Maya frame buffer. Now one thing that's very important uh, to keep in mind when doing that is if you go back to our render settings and you come down to this section, if you don't have this convert image to sRGB for render view clicked, um, it will not send a linear version of your image. It'll send uh, one with the incorrect gamma for sRGB. So let's do that and see what that looks like. So if I come here, send it over to the Maya frame buffer. Now you'll see that this, this image is in the, the incorrect color space. If you hop back and forth, you can see here's the one that we really want, the linear image, and then here's one where the lighting's all off because it doesn't have the correct gamma curve. So keep that in mind to always have convert image to sRGB checked if you're going to be popping back and forth between the V-Ray frame buffer and the standard Maya frame render view. Okay, so moving along from there, uh, standard stop and render if you want to render another one. So now let's go down to the bottom left hand and let's turn on a couple of things. So if you remember when we first opened this up, uh, there were a couple of extra things available. There's a history that you can enable. 
where basically you can take your images that you have rendered out and you can save them over here into the V-Ray frame buffer history. That way you can do a little bit of uh, A over B. So let's take a look and see what that looks like now. So if I open up a previous version, and now this one I rendered at a higher resolution. We'll set that to A. We'll set this one to B. And we can use this little wipe tool to see the differences between the two renders. It's not an A over B um, like you're comping it. It's an A or B, you know, you get to see A versus B. So you can see in this one, A, I had enabled uh, the reflection, and B, there was no reflection channel enabled. And you can see the difference there. So that's a nice, real quick way to kind of check your work without having to bounce it off to Nuke all the time. So A over B, very useful. Now another thing you can do is you can add annotation. As you see we've done here, you just right click and it gives you this edit comment. You can go here, you can type in whatever you need. Final shot, save and close. And now you'll see that the notation adds up here. And we'll be using this later on when we're talking in the section about the um, image sampling. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of comparison and adding notes. So. So that's the VRA frame buffer history, a great little addition. Now another useful piece. Um, it's your color correction. Now it gives you a little bit of ability to do some color tweaking again to, to keep you in app and not having to bounce everything out to Nuke right away. You can do a little bit of checking like you can see. You know, maybe I want to mess with a little bit of my exposure. Check things out. Contrast. Pretty self-explanatory. Great little way to, you know, just kind of get a little bit of an idea of what's going to happen when you, when you do a little bit of grading on this bad boy. Uh, same thing, white balance. Pretty standard. Hue sat color balance, levels, curves. Um, you can throw a background image uh, behind. Like, so say if I had this guy as a cutout, he had an alpha and he was just rendered over black. Uh, we could throw a background plate behind him. Uh, pretty simple just by enabling it here. So this background image. So that's a nice little one that's handy. Again, if you don't want to bounce it out to RV or to Nuke, you can just load up your plate, uh, a single frame of your plate behind and, and just check your alpha against the plate. It's another great little feature. And the other things that are on here that are, you know, kind of useful, you can take a look and check here again. This was the same thing as I mentioned before when you're bouncing out to the Maya render view. Um, this just lets you see it in the incorrect gamma and then with uh, the linear sRGB applied. You'll always want this on, um, but just to show you that you can toggle back and forth between that. Now, another thing that can sometimes be helpful in here, the same way that these color correction tools are useful and the frame buffer history is useful, is there's also a little option to add some blooming effects uh, and glare effects. You'll see the raw render, everything was a little bit more sharp, um, but I can see, you know, sort of a, a quick preview of what things might look like. After comp, we throw a little bit of glow on there, blooms it. Just, you know, it lets you see, again, just in-app, keeping you in Maya, keeping you in V-Ray as long as possible so that you can send the best possible image out to your compers because everybody knows compers like the best possible image. They don't want to have to do anything more than what they need to. Um, so that's a way for us to help them. And, and as CG, it's our responsibility to hand off the best possible work to our comp artists uh, because they're the last line of defense. So and that's just another little thing we can play with in frame buffer but aside from that the only other things that are going to be relevant to us in the frame buffer are just working through our projects and just using V-Ray in general um, down here on the right we have the op option to toggle this little guy on here it lets us know which version of V-Ray we're in render time these are the available qualifiers that you can add to this to 
include in this chain. But really, honestly, the majority of these guys are not really going to be relevant to us other than just render time. That's really the only thing we care about. Okay, and then if you wanted to, you could change the font. Uh, great. <laughs> we, you'll never use that. But so that's the V-Ray frame buffer um, in a nutshell. You're going to learn to love it. You're going to be in it every day. It's a wonderful thing. It's super useful. There's a lot of tools in here, and you know the Chaos Group guys have really done a great job because the V-Ray frame buffer is really one of the things that sets it apart. Uh, again, from other renderers, just how quickly you can sift through the information that you need to make the right decision and move on and and you know get through your shots. It's just a great tool. So that's the V-Ray frame buffer.